This is East Midlands Today with Dominic Heal and me, Anne Davis. Tonight, thousands pay their respects at the funeral of the Dowager Duchess of Devonshire. Royalty was there, along with hundreds of staff from the Chatsworth estate saying their last goodbye. Also tonight, the fight against a deadly disease. Aid leaves East Midlands Airport to help victims of Ebola. Plus, what does the future hold for Derby's assembly rooms, seven months after a devastating fire which destroyed what used to be the plant room? And working in a war zone, the married couple stationed with the RAF tornadoes in Afghanistan. We don't really talk about work outside of work. And then in work, we probably speak to each other less than if we were just friends, don't we? No one wants to see people cuddling in the corner. Hello, good evening, welcome to the programme. First tonight, mourners came to pay their last respects to the Dowager Duchess of Devonshire at a funeral today on the Chatsworth estate. Among those attending were the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. Staff from the stately home lined the route as the cortege left Chatsworth House for the service at St Peter's Church in the village of Enza. The service was relayed onto a big screen outside the church so as many people as possible could pay tribute to her life. Our reporter Simon Hare is at Chatsworth House this evening. Good evening. Yes, the sun is setting here at Chatsworth tonight following a day of mixed emotions. Inevitably sadness following the death of the uh, Dowager Duchess of Devonshire. But we've also seen a celebration for a very long and full life that had a profound impact on Derbyshire. A final farewell to the Dowager Duchess, known to many simply as Debo. Staff from the estate lined the whole route from Chatsworth House to Enza. They then joined the mourners, which included the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall. So bless the fellowship of the Royal Victorian Order. At St Peter's Church in the estate village where she'd spent her final years, hundreds gathered to watch the service on big screens. According to her wishes, she was carried in a simple wicker coffin. As well as flowers, it bore eggs and grapes from Chatsworth. Estate workers who'd had a particularly close relationship with Her Grace acted as pallbearers. Among the hymns and readings, some of her beloved Elvis, How Great Thou Art, a sentiment returned today hundreds of times over. She was very genuine and down to earth. You never felt like you, know, you were scared of her. She was lovely, really nice person. Just admire the Duchess so much, so much. She's done so much to build Chatsworth up. Then her body was committed to the soil of the Chatsworth estate, an estate she'd spent most of her life transforming into one of Britain's most popular tourist attractions. And then, in the garden next to the house, a celebration. She'd said no memorial service, said there was music and drinks for family and friends, like local photographer Ron Duggins. With the Duchess, uh, everything was a joke and... and fun. Yeah. So she'd have she'd have enjoyed today. She certainly would. I mean, she was here. So some tears, but we also heard many happy memories as well. And over the last 20 years or so, my colleague James Robeson met the Dowager Duchess many times, and here are some of his personal recollections. I'll always treasure the numerous times I met the Dowager Duchess, and in particular this note that she sent me after I'd been to see her a few years ago at the old vicarage at Ensor. And at the end of the note, in typical style, she thanked me personally for having been to see her. She was a great writer of letters and of books. Perhaps she wrote so much because her mother notably completely omitted Deborah's birth from her diary. I looked for my birth date and it was blank, nothing. She was so disappointed to get a six unwanted girl. The youngest of seven Mitford children, Deborah in the 1930s went on to mix with high society. I went to a dance and I wrote Dance with Jack Kennedy. Very nice, but rather dull. This, uh, here's the Kennedys. The Kennedys. This is Kathleen. Kathleen Kennedy, yes. who married my brother-in-law, Billy Hartington. Mm -hmm. 
The death of Billy Hartington meant Deborah's husband eventually inherited the Devonshire estates. She left her Mitford past behind and started turning Chatsworth around. Even that Jack Kennedy came to visit, now as president. But Chatsworth and family were always her first loves. And yes. this was for your for my son's... For Stoker's coming of age. Yes. Stoker, as her son, the current Duke, is known, has in his turn inherited Chatsworth, but letters still, until recently, went to his mother. I think it is loved. You could say it's loved. I get heaps of letters from people saying I've had a terrible illness or a terrible tragedy in my life, and I've come to walk in the park at Chatsworth, and I feel much better. Well, that's, that's a tribute, isn't it? Well, during her life, she supported many charities, particularly here in Derbyshire. And it looks like that is going to continue following her death because today any donations that have been made in her memory are going to go to two good causes that were particularly close to her heart. A fun run, but with a serious intent. The grounds of Chatsworth House host an event earlier this year to raise money for the Helen's Trust. It helps terminally ill people, in whatever way needed, to enable them to spend their final days in their own home. Sarah Porter from Beeley received help for her mother, Margot. She was diagnosed with cancer and died 10 weeks later, and it just enabled her to spend those last weeks in the bosom of her family. The support comes in through one phone call and they just provide the additional care you need. It's all coordinated from this small office in Bakewell. Helen's trust only discovered after the Dowager Duchess's death that it had been chosen as one of two charities to benefit from money donated in her memory. I actually approached her right at the inception of the charity in 2001 to ask whether she'd be a patron. At the time, she said, I'm in my 80s, I should be doing less, not more, but I will support you because I completely get what you're trying to do. The second beneficiary was also established in 2001. The Addington Fund was set up after the foot and mouth crisis to help farmers with any unforeseen circumstances. We are humbled and honoured because it really is a terrific feeling to, to think that she thought so much of us, really. James Furness is the latest generation of his family to work this land at Baslow on the Chatsworth estate. You have so many different aspects of farming where people have problems, troubles, and the, the charity is there to help those people who've maybe fallen on hard times. Since the Dowager Duchess's death last week, some flowers have been placed at Chatsworth. One bunch bears the message, the beautiful adored jewel of Derbyshire has gone. Your work is done, but her charitable works live on. And I understand that the Helen's Trust has actually received a five-figure donation in memory of the Dowager Duchess. So the end of a day that's seen some very fulsome tributes and respects paid to one of our region's best-known and well-loved characters. Back to you. Oh, Simon, thank you very much. An extraordinary life, an extraordinary lady. And some uh, really yeah. interesting reports there. Absolutely.